Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be. This is how to obtain an appropriate medical certificate. What's the objective? To get an understanding of medical standards, both mental and physical, required for operating an aircraft. So what does a student pilot need? Well, let's talk about driving. When you're a teenager, you get your license and you can keep on driving forever, basically. As long as you keep sending in your money to renew, they're not going to do any new uh, medical tests. If your eyes and ears basically aren't working as you get older, you can still drive. Uh, now, on the other hand, with flying, there are federal regulations um, under 61.23 medical certificates. It says must hold at least a third class medical certificate when exercising the privileges of a private pilot certificate, recreational pilot certificate, or student pilot certificate, except when operating under conditions limitations set forth in 61.113, which is called basic med. We'll get to that later. So what's the first step? Uh, you can't just go to your normal doctor. You need to go to what's called an aviation medical examiner, known as an AME. You go to the FAA site. You can look for ones in your area, or you can just ask uh, other people who they use. So I did both. I looked it up when I moved here. I also asked my neighbors because uh, some of them are pilots, and there's basically one guy that's right here in town. That's who they use. What will they test? They will test your hearing. They will test your eyes, your lungs, your heart. They'll do a urine test uh, and no blood test. Um, I, I heard that, you know, some college students were worried about the uh, urine test. No, they're not looking for drugs. They're looking for um, be able to find major conditions. So why uh, these medical certificates? Because the FAA doesn't want you to pass out and then crash into a house, an apartment building, or a school. What about pre-existing conditions? So before you even go see the doctor, you go online, you fill out some stuff in the FAA database using what's called FAA MedExpress. You print out the form, you bring it to the doctor. Uh, you can go ahead and talk to uh, the doctor about your medical issues, but also understand that once you put something in there every time you go to your uh, AMA, you're going to need to talk about that again. So are there conditions that will be a problem? Yes. Uh, if you have some medical, is medical issues, can you get um, a third class medical. Yes, I got problems and I don't have to jump through any hoops. I just have to talk about, you know, my Crohn's issues, uh, minor asthma problems, and so forth. The eye machine. For me, the, uh, the biggest problem I've had is there are some eye machines that these people are given and they're notorious for if you move your head in a certain way, you can't see stuff, and then all of a sudden you can you can see everything. You could actually uh, avoid a lot of that um, by going to see um, your eye doctor. Uh, if you have already have glasses, then you're already going to an eye doctor. Um, you can ask them if they could fill out the FAA uh, form 8500-7, the last medical uh, I did. My eye doctor didn't fill out the, the entire form, but at least they printed out everything that the AME needed. So um, the AMEs will have the documentation of what your vision is after correction. If you have glasses, um, I still had to use the eye machine to do uncorrected vision tests, but they're just writing down the numbers for the uh, FAA forms. Does a third class medical expire? Well, it is valid for 60 months for pilots under 40, and it is valid for 24 months for pilots ages 40 and up. So my suggestion would be, uh, as you get closer to 40, doing a 39, because then it'll last for five years. My problem is, is I didn't, and so I had to do it like 40, 42, etc. Medical deficiencies. These are disqualifying conditions by history or clinical diagnosis. 
So uh, you can go through what's called a special issuance authorization if you have any of these particular issues. A lot of them basically have to do with the heart or mental disorders. You can work with the FAA office and you can get through it, but there are some things that you just cannot get a medical. Um, it is good to know this ahead of time, early in the training process, so you don't get too far in and find out you're gonna have a problem. There are also uh, things called khakis, conditions AMEs can issue. And there is a, a whole list of stuff that can be done. Um, so the special issuance, uh, good news is you'll still be able to fly. Bad news is, is that you may have to jump through some hoops and if your condition gets worse, you have to report it, etc. But like I said, minor issues, no problem. You're in and out of the doctor in no time. Uh, soda, no, not Coke or Pepsi. Um, this is a statement of demonstrated ability. So if you have a major problem, physical, uh, like you only have you know, one eye working, you only have one arm working, you could actually basically prove that you can still fly. There's ways to get that done. So when is a third class medical required? So uh, as we said before, when exercising privileges of a private pilot certificate, recreational pilot certificate, or student pilot certificate, um, when exercising the privileges of a flight instructor certificate uh, and acting as the pilot in command uh, or as a required flight crew member um, when taking a practical test in an aircraft for recreational pilot, private pilot, commercial pilot, or ATP or a flight instructor certificate. Uh, when performing the duties as an examiner in an aircraft when administrating a practical test for proficiency check uh, for an airman certificate rating or authorization. Then there's the second class medical. Uh, second class medical is uh, must hold a second class medical certificate when exercising second in command privileges of an airline transport pilot certificate in part 121, privileges of a commercial pilot certificate in an aircraft other than a balloon or glider, uh, except under paragraph, privileges of a commercial pilot uh, certificate with a balloon class rating for compensation or higher. So the last couple medicals I've done were second class medicals so I could legally charge money if something ever came up. So. If somebody called and said, hey, do you have time to ferry an aircraft? There actually have been calls that I've gotten like that. I just haven't had the time. So I've never really needed to have a second class, but I would rather have it and not need it than something come up and I don't have it. How long does it last? 12 months, regardless of age, basically a year. Vision required. 2020 in each eye with or without glasses versus 2040 for third class. Uh, it falls back to a third class after 12 months. So I've done that. So I get the second class medical after a year. I see that I'm not doing anything for commercial flying and I wait a, a bit and it falls back to a third class so I can still go fly planes. First class medical. Uh, to the people that are watching this video, this is probably not needed at this time, but it's good for you to know for the future. If you're looking to fly the large passenger plane someday. So a must hold a first class medical certificate when exercising the pilot in command privileges of an airport airline transport pilot certificate. When exercising the second in command privileges of an ATP, etc. How long does it last? 12 months if under 40, six months if 40 or older. Vision, uh, same as the second class. EKG required at 35 and yearly after 40. Also falls back to a third class medical. Who does not need a medical certificate at all? Hmm. When exercising the privileges of a student pilot certificate while seeking a sport pilot certificate with glider 
or balloon privileges, a pilot certificate with a glider category rating or balloon class rating when exercising the privileges of a sport pilot certificate with privileges in a glider or balloon. When exercising the privileges of a pilot certificate with a glider rating or balloon class rating in a glider or balloon, when exercising the privileges of a flight instructor certificate with a sport pilot rating in a glider or balloon, a glider category rating, when exercising the privileges of a flight instructor certificate if the person is not acting as pilot in command or serving as a required pilot flight crew member. Basic Med. So this came out after I got my... Um, private pilot license. What do I need to do to fly under basic med? You need to have a U.S. driver's license. You need to have held a medical, whether that's a third class, second class, or first class, after July 14, 2006. So you need to have at least one, at least a third class one time to be able to do basic med afterwards. Get a physical exam with a state licensed physician, a state licensed physician. So any doctor in your state. You bring forth the form, they sign it, you're okay. <coughs> you got to complete a basic med, medical education course. Basically you go online for that. Limitations, any aircraft authorized under federal law not to carry more than six occupants has a maximum certificated takeoff weight of not more than 6,000 pounds. Carries not more than five passengers. Uh, operates under VFR or FR, IFR within the United States at less than 18,000 feet. Not exceeding 250 knots. Flight not operated for compensation or higher. So for most uh, flying, you know, in rentals with your friends, etc., this is fine. Uh, if you're going to be doing commercial stuff, this is not fine. How long is basic med good for? The physical exam must be done every 48 months. Online education every 24 months. And there's a quiz on the AOPA site to see if you qualify. And here's a nice summary chart of things I talked about. Thank you for listening.